we will call the Clarence County Commission meeting for September 22nd to order to arise and join John Spires in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, number one, public comment period. Is there anyone signed up for public comment? Is there anyone on Zoom that wishes to speak publicly? Anyone on Zoom that wants to speak publicly? Good. Hearing none, we will move to number two, which is the consent agenda. What's the pleasure? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Payroll change notices. A through I. Motion to approve. Motion no, has been made to approve. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Um, according to our county administrator, nothing can be presented and put on the agenda after 11 on Friday. Is that correct? 11 is the cutoff on Friday, yes. Okay, and you placed something on the agenda. It was sent in on 9.40 on Monday. So that cannot be an agenda item. It was placed on the agenda on Monday. And sent in to be placed on the agenda on Monday. Is that correct? Uh, the cutoff time is 11 on Friday. So we can start putting the agenda together. We have made exceptions for first thing Monday morning if something comes in to allow that, as long as the agenda is not completed as a packet and ready to go online. Well, I had something that was sent to you at 11 on one. I was told that it didn't make it in on time. So I'm trying to understand what that time it is because the packet for the agenda did not go out until 2 30. And you refused to put my two items on the agenda. So if my items can't be on the agenda, how can your item be on the agenda and the sheriff's item be on the agenda? The sheriff got his in on Friday. We can take mine off. That's it says fine. Monday. It, the paperwork was actually delivered to the office on Friday. Tax this letter and the payroll change notice on Monday. You sent one in on Saturday. I did send one in on Saturday. Okay, well, that's after Friday. That is after Friday. So, help this commissioner understand why, when he requested something on Friday at 11, that he got told no and the other people didn't. Your items came in on Monday at 11. The agenda was already put together. And well, it wasn't because I already know for a fact I talked to the girls. The agenda was not finished until Monday afternoon at 2 34. She already started scanning and putting together the agenda. Your items, and you weren't even in here that morning and yep. never said anything about agenda I, items being on. I she emailed it to you. You emailed, I went back and looked and okay. I did get an email 11 or two. I just want to know what's on the agenda and what isn't on the agenda and how it's determined because I was told no, other people are told yes, including yourself. So okay. what's an agenda item and what is an agenda item? I'm not going to play this game with this commission that I was politely told at 11 on Friday. 
It's always been 11 on Friday, and I believe the sheriff delivered his. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Okay, Susan, here. You tell me how he did. But he could have hand delivered it, and this could have been a follow up email. I can't speak to that. That's exactly what it was. Okay. It was that's, not, that's not what the girls think. Well, and what about yours for Saturday? I did send one in on Saturday. Is it on the agenda? It is on the agenda. We can take it off and have it on next week if that would make you happy. I'll just make me if we were just the same for everybody. Okay, okay, then we'll take that off and we'll have it on next week. and. So the sheriff's here. Did you have your request in by 11 on Friday? Uh, first of all, I don't answer to the commission or commissioners, uh, but uh, and I can't answer that because my staff delivered and delivered it out. So I'm not sure when they got it out. So uh, to appease you, a little answer to you on that. Question. Thank you, Sheriff. Yes, okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Number four, minutes and or amended minutes of previous meeting. What's the pleasure? Motion to approve. Motion to approve number four, the minutes. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. Please not be in opposition. And who's next? No, look, however you do that. Okay, number five, requisitions, purchase orders, invoices. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Exoneration, corrective tickets, joint property applications. It appears that we just have exonerations as exhibit A. Under A, under six as A. Motion to approve A. Motion to approve six A. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Number seven, review, discuss, consider making Peggy Bailey director of OEM. Do you have information on that, Laura? And Peggy was going to be here today, but something came up. She was unable to attend. Um, she would like to have this conversation. She um, very touched that it would be on here, that you would think of her. She would like to have this conversation, maybe an executive session at a different date with the commission. Problem rescheduling a little bit, you guys. Mm -hmm. I just reschedule it when it's convenient for her. Okay. Number eight review, discuss, consider future of courthouse security and oversight. Anybody? What's the, I don't know whose item that is. So uh, during work session, Commissioner Precost said that after the levy was passed, we wouldn't visit on who was going to be in charge of courthouse security. We haven't had the levy yet. Well, the levy has to tell us who's going to be courthouse security. We have to spell out. Right now, it's spelled out that belongs to the sheriff. I'm not going to go for a levy that's not going to spell it out for the sheriff. If you want to remove it from the sheriff, then that's the way the levy should stay. But I'm not going to misrepresent to the people of the county that we've already given this over to the sheriff. The sheriff has control and control of the money. If he's not going to have control of the money, then we have to go ahead and do it before the levy. So we're here to discuss what Mr. Trecoff's intentions were during the month. I personally have no problem with leaving with the sheriff. That's just my thoughts. Okay. Sheriff, do you have any insight into this? Would you like to, is it okay if I ask him? Yeah, we'll make sure. I'll be in charge. 
Yeah, I'm more than happy to continue as is. I think that it's uh, with the courthouse security board and working with the judges and the commissions, it, it's uh, I think it works well. Uh, I'm happy to continue that way. I'll make a motion that the agreement that exists between the sheriff's office and the county commission stay in force and that the levy money goes to uh, oversight of the sheriff. I don't know that actually there's already an agreement in and says all that, so I don't know if there's any further action to be taken. Am I wrong, Trey? This is confirmatory. Okay. So it doesn't hurt one way or the other. Okay. Motion's been made. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Number nine, update on Gladden property. Charlotte has sent pictures down and I am trying to find out where she is right now. She just wanted to get a quick update. Hey, what, do we want to move on to 10 and take care of that? And let's see, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Nine. Is that all right, guys? Yes, it is. Okay. Move on to number 10 until Ms. Schaefer responds. Review, discuss, consider monthly minutes, financial information from various boards, committees, and public service districts. A through F. Motion approved. The motion has been made to approve number 10, A through F. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Okay. Any response? No response yet? No response. Okay. We will move to number 11. Review, discuss, consider adoption of levy order for vital services with election to be held on Saturday, January 22nd, 2022. We have two options A and B. You want to take these separately or do you want to discuss what you can explain to us? This I'm going to pass out with an updated uh, number one with a five percent increase. This for the numbers from last year, just so we have fresh in our head. Levy this time. Option one is the one with the five percent increase yearly. Based upon last year's final number of this levy. On the smaller handout that I gave you, you can go and look at this final year of this levy and what those final numbers are to see if it's going to. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm seeing on this one is fiscal year 21, the Senior Citizen Center gets $234,909, and that is what they will get in fiscal year 22. The Ambulance Authority stays the same in 21, and then 22, 
So of course, by county health access and Susan, by county and health access got an increase. Susan Duhon stayed the same on this one. Summit Center, of course, was taken out. Health department stayed the same from 21 and 22. Job Advocacy Center has been added in. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec went from 905,000, I'm sorry, 1,099,000 to 1.1. Sport health security. And in 21, it's 400,000. In 22, it's 500,000. Animal control in 21 is 439. In fiscal year 22, it's 489. And 911 from 1.2 to 1.0. Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, but I have a question. When we did animal control, we were bumping them for a building. That was, that was my understanding. We were bumping them 100,000. And how much do we have when they're building from? I believe there's 100,000. I'll get that number from Erica. Did you do that very quickly? Because I'm thinking it's a lot more than that. And we might not need to bump that. Under the dog and kennel phone. That's the case. We could move some of that money back into some of these other areas. Do you have any questions on this one, Mr. Trigo? No, not at all. You have a printout that shows those figures in the dog account fund? No, it's a lot less. Where'd you get your information? Uh, I inquired on what funds were set aside. Did you inquire with the bookkeeping department? No, ma'am. They don't look for me. We could have asked John to make sure to speak to his employees. That's what I have more for. 
Erica says there is not a capital outlay line item in there, not that she is aware of. Originally, she gave me the current budget for animal control of 439000 I was trying to explain to her the line item for the building that we can set aside for it. And she maintenance and repair 3000 So she is, is telling me there isn't a capital outlay line item there that she's aware of. That she's aware of? That she's aware of. How much is in their budget right now? How much extra cash they have? And hold on, she said, wait, it's under a different name 59,888. What are those funds used to do? The 439. No, the 59. Does that, does that come from fees? Is that. I just know Commissioner Watson said that over the years they've been providing money for kennel repair to the tune of roughly around six hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Oh, so that's where you got them from. So the 59888, is that money that is set aside every year specifically? Capital outlay, equipment and building is a line item under the budget. And each year they've been putting money aside. So that's where that 59,000. But there's nothing with 600,000. No. Another question I could ask you, Erica, while we have her on the phone. I, I think I will have to go in and look at it because I think that uh, somebody's looking in the wrong accounts. Yes, Erica. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, the sheriff being a treasurer of the county, maybe I'm the guy that you should ask more often about these things, but there's 702,749 dollars Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. That's our fire for any further discussion on that? Uh, if you want to take some of that bill money and put it somewhere else. I would say take half of it, put it in the courthouse security. At this point, I don't have any desire to move any money until I have more information. <laughs> on that where it came from. Well, we don't have to move money today for that. We're here to talk about the levy right now. Right. Am I correct? Talking about reducing the animal control because we said we were going to spend money for a new building, which we seem to have the money for a new building. Taking some of that increase and putting it over into the security. That's doesn't have anything to do with the money. But Why do we need to increase security? If we always come up short, we're always making up the deficit on it. No, I think it can, we can take it at some point in time if we need to. I don't know that it has to happen right now. Take what? Money. I mean, not. we can take care of security. We've taken care of it before. Am I correct, Sheriff? We take it out of general fund. Yeah, I think we were a little heavy during COVID. We had this discussion of their budget time. We were asked to reduce. Uh, we're not going to fill a vacant position that we've eliminated from Third Street. 
And the only recommendation that I would have on that is your future plans for the, the new building. That, but as we are today, and as I project this through the, the rest of the fiscal year, uh, we'll probably have a decrease. I don't know that, I don't think that we will need any increase at all. So. Thank you. And we can't transfer loads. I understand that. Okay. And we want to vote on this or so as you can see well, you're looking at the budget last year this is what occurred this year so i'm assuming since that went up that's what it's in the dollar panel account sure she said she's seven hundred she was looking at the budget to see if there was anything in there for it is that what you were looking at yeah okay Final services you were looking at two different things. Things. right gotcha Okay. Dog makes line. sense now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. I would like to discuss the other one that's been presented to me before we vote on this one. You have the other one, copies of the other one present. Do you need a copy? No, I don't. What's your questions? My only comment on this one is I uh, would like to bump Parks and Rec to 50,000. I just would like to know why we're not doing 5% increases annually. I personally don't think it's necessary. This is just me speaking. We're one of the only counties, maybe the only county in the state, but that doesn't make it right, wrong, or indifferent. And as Laura has told us, we're under states that we probably could not sustain that. Can somebody explain that to me with the, how we came up with this number and why it's sustainable? But it's less than any number over five years of five percent. How is that not sustainable? So how is a number that is more each year sustainable than a number that's less? I'd love to hear this. We cannot go over seven point one five between all the different levels. Okay. Um, the transit levy right now is 2.54. The vital is set at 4.17. By having it at that rate, we can collect a maximum amount, but we can back it off each year with that rate. Um, Shelly from the auditor's office says that it's just not sustainable to have an increase in rate each year. You don't know what the property values are going to be, and we could end up not collecting enough money that we need. So how does this correct? You're not knowing if you're going to have enough property values by coming up with a single number. Now that, that variable doesn't change. Your property values go down no matter what, whether you have a 5% increase or you go with a straight number. Your, your property values, you don't have any control over. That's controlled by the assessor. It's lost values the last two years. But the 5% increase, you have flexibility. You don't have any flexibility here, but you go down. Correct. We can go down. We are saying that we need a maximum of 5.1, but if we collect more or if this rate at this property value is going to give us more, we can actually lower that rate and lower the tax. That's if, if your values go up. That is correct. And your values have gone down. Oil and gas is going to be taken away from us. Personal property is going to be taken away from us. We're only looking at the downward spiral here in values. Have you all taken any of that into consideration when you did this? Where, how much money your values have dropped this year and last year? I'd love to see those worksheets. The thought process was we'd rather set a number and we can lower the taxes versus increasing the taxes every year. Because the 4.17, for example, is going to bring in more money than is approximated on the levy. 
So the guidance from the auditor's office stated that if we wanted to do a flat rate, if that was what the commission wanted to do, so to do, that the guidance was to set that rate artificially high in case it needed to be that high. But every year when the budget, when the commission does the budget, that rate will back way down to the lowest percentage it can possibly be to bring in that dollar amount that's approximated. That's how it was explained. I mean, this is just going to reduce the money that we give out. The values are going to continue to go down at the rate we're going. The state legislature continually plays on what we get back. This. These numbers right here is what we say. We are definitely given each of these entities each year. You can't say that. Can you say that on yours? I mean, I'm just I'm mine, asking. mine is that number with that five percent increase. There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee you're going to collect increase. any of this. I this mean, that's is, the sad is, part. Yeah. Well, it's like it's been that for years. It's been that way as long as we've had it. You never know if you're going to collect all your taxes. So what's two hundred eighty-six thousand times five? Five or times five percent? Times five. 1.4. 1.4. So then we're going to add another 300,000 to that, so 1.7. What are the five years under the other plan total? Of? Under the variable levy rate? Yeah. Twenty-four point nine. Sure about that. Adding up each year because all the rates are different. Four four nine nine four six zero four seven three four which is not eight four nine seven zero three three eight five two three one. Nine three three five four nine three five three zero two four comma nine three zero comma one five nine. Are we getting different? I wanted those five numbers crossed on that up to that. Maybe you got the wrong different numbers. You said across. Are you going down? I'm going across. So you're taking one at a time. All the total. You're doing the total. You're just doing. I'm doing the help, Harrison County. You're going to charge. You're going to charge. The people are going to pay an extra uh, one hundred and thirty thousand dollars every year. Love it. Your levy costs more than the five percent increase, and you have no buffer for any loss of values in this solid number. I don't know who advised you, but I would love to hear how they think that it's one, you're increasing the levy, and two, how they're allowing for loss of value. So in the discussions with the auditor's office, 
we are the only county in the state that does a 5% increase every year. So we've been doing this as our what fourth year or fourth uh, levy and we've never had an issue. Oh no, this is our first levy with a 5% increase. What was no, last year's no. levy? Oh, was, oh, was it five or is it less than five percent before? I'm talking about the, the, the maximum. Were the other one before that as well? Yep. The five percent increase, but they just trained it. I'm not saying I'm just trying to understand why we're changing horses. It's costing the taxpayers more and it gives more flexibility. So I'm, I'm just trying to understand why all of a sudden we're wanting to change. I trust the guidance from the auditor's office. I do they, too. They check wow. out every county in the state. They've never, they don't do levies. They have they the approved them. Approval. You're, you're saying the auditor's office has to approve the approve levy. Eventually it does go to them. Yeah. So if we would approve a levy today, then mm -hmm. it goes on the ballot. It is If it is approved by the public or voters, yep. then from there it goes to the auditor's office. If our numbers are over, if our percentages are over, they can actually reject our levy. Did I? Yes. Correct. That is what I've been understood this whole time. Okay. And just, just so you know, the, um, the spreadsheet tool that we use um, to generate the different amounts um, to be collected, to, to, if we're using the percentages to see um, what each of those percentages would collect. That tool came from the auditor's office. That's the. That's yeah, but they still only get to do a technical issue. They don't have the final so If they do, I, I want to hear from somebody from the auditor's office. You're you're right. They they definitely they they we never received any guidance from them about what percentages we should use, what distribution amounts we should use. They never told us anything like that. That they said that was completely up to us. Um, what we've been told is just what Laura said that. After everything is done, they absolutely will reject it if it doesn't meet like certain criteria. So and again, you two worked on this levy. How much does this theory of yours increase the levy? These numbers that you put down over what we said the other day, we didn't want to increase the levy a penny. And from what I can see, we're increasing the levy. So I'm not sure I understand. Why would we be adding the cost? Well, my thought, Commissioner Tree Cost, Commissioner Thomas, and I said our goal was, it was not to increase the levy. But I, I don't think that's the case here. It's going to increase with the increases that you build in. Am I wrong? Correct. It's okay. going to increase okay. with the 5% every year. <laughs> It was based upon the numbers that we used from the previous five years. I don't even know where these numbers came from. How did you determine these numbers? Going through the notes from our work sessions and knowing that we wanted to increase animal control by 100,000, that we wanted to increase security by 50,000, that we wanted to decrease from the 911. Let's just stay with senior citizens. How did we go from 234 first year to 286 for all five years? Going through the numbers and the calculations, it gave them an increase of what it was. That's why it's here for us to talk about and to decide on. What increase did you give them? Fifty, well under fifty, so at the lower fifty. We discussed that in our work sessions.
that gives them an increase of $51,745. That's something we discussed in the work session. Not specifically, no. Not <clears throat> because we didn't specifically talk about doing it this way either. Doing what's wrong? Just one figure. I mean, she's oh, I, reviewed I this and her. That's, and that's what I'm trying to understand when, when we well, get Well, we're here to, to discuss it. Get to put into it. Into it. We're here to discuss it. The key takeaways that we took away from the work session what work session? The levy work sessions that we held in July was to take 400000 away from 911, was to take out the United Summit Center, was to give an increase to Bi County Nutrition, was to give an increase to Health Access, was to give an increase to Animal Control. With the different notes that we took from that work session, we made sure that all of that is included in this levy. We worked with the assessor's office to find out the numbers as they are today, so we got a good idea of what it would be, and this is how we came up with the number. We try to sustain each entity over the next five years. So, when did we say you could take four hundred thousand out of Parks and Rec? When it left the meeting, that would be an increase of three hundred thousand. It was to be an increase. Of so how did it reduce? I I don't remember that meeting. No, that's why it is put in front of you to discuss and to vote upon. In the meantime, we've also said about how we have no control over parks and rec. Well, then I ain't good to love it. Just trying to understand why you, why you, somebody arbitrarily decided to take four hundred thousand dollars away from Parks and Rec, and then we turned around and took two hundred and some thousand away from nine one one, and I have no idea what Harrison County Improvement Opportunity Fund. I missed that meeting totally. I don't even know what that means. Why it's the largest funded project in the levy. And we've never discussed it. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to ask, why I would ask the taxpayers to fund it. Because at this point, the one that I presented was 4.4 million. 4.5, we're going to have 5.6 for $600,000 on base year for the taxpayers. Madam President, right now we have two options. One of them is oh, no, we're not done talking about these past ones. You're going to, somebody's going to explain to me what Harrison County Improvement Opportunity is. I think the people of this county deserve to know if you're going to pass a doesn't even have a description in the levy call. I spoke to Laura about it because I asked the question. It's money that can go to, towards anything from water to sewer to park and recreation or anything that's infrastructure for capital improvement. Does, that's all, it, does, that's it, does that's it say that in here? That's on the same question. Whose idea was it? I think it's a good idea from staff. I, I asked the question. Whose idea was it? I just told you, David. Was it yours? No, it's staff's, and I think it's a good idea. Staff came up on this. You came up with this on your own. Did that surprise you? I just was trying to figure out how we, when we discussed and authorized to do something for staff to go out and figure out how to spend the county's money. That's about my job, not yours. So it's Brett, and it's my job to present you with information to discuss and vote upon. Present me with information that I ask for. That's the issue. It's what we ask for, not what you want to do. So again, this you're taking the 
full responsibility for this. It's an easy answer, yes or no? Yes. So you think we should uh, levy the people of this county more money for whatever than for all these items that we've always done, increase the levy by a million dollars? I want to make sure that these different programs are able to sustain throughout all of this. What programs? Everything from the health department, from 911, from health access. What's it have to do with this 886,000? It all ties together. No, it doesn't. Okay. We, can't, we can't take that money and go put it where we want. I don't even think it's legal. I'd love for a legal opinion. I think to go any forward more with that is uh, until legal opinion is uh, irresponsible of this commission because it does not explain anything about what this money's for. Harrison County approved opportunity. Order against it. I don't even know why it would be for or why it'd be against it. The others are all pretty self-explanatory. So what did the auditor's office pay about this one? They said it was allowable. With just that description. Yeah. Get them on the phone. They're not at our beck and call. They work for us. Patsy, it's my request. It's not yours. We're here to discuss it. If you don't want to discuss it. Well, we can discuss it. And if we want to put it back on next week, let's discuss this week and put it back on next week and go from there. How's that? Well, I don't think we can continue to wait on this. Well, it's got to be. It's. I mean, whatever. I'm just trying to. Get past this. I don't see. I don't. I don't see a, a levy that's presented by staff that's passable or legal. What's your opinion? Has our attorney looked over this? Uh, Commissioner, to answer your question, I reviewed in the context of the agenda. I have not been involved in the levy process of attending the meetings. If you want me to review the levy for compliance and to give an opinion and follow up with the auditor, I'm happy to do that. Uh, I only want an opinion on this Harrison County Improvement Opportunity Fund. Because if we got that, if we're going to do that, then that's um, why we just don't increase everybody else. Do the dollar. Yes. And uh, somebody from the auditor's office to please tell me why it's uh, not sustainable for a 5% increase. But it's sustainable for. I can give you Shelly's contact information if you want to reach out to her. No, I want her here. They're the ones who advised our people. I didn't advise our people to do this. They went and talked to them. And they're listening to them. They're doing their job. They're doing their due diligence. They can explain it to me. I'm trying to prepare. Okay. Are you okay with next week? Can we do this? But it's we we've got to move forward with this. We can't this, this next week pardon me waste any time. January vote to affirm the but, timeline. Yes. Yes. Okay. I took that into consideration when I brought the other one up. Only question. I wouldn't let that happen, Trey. I just want to point out that they, the last one was done with the primary. So okay. Everybody okay with putting this back on next week and every it's got we've got to swim or sink or swim next week okay so are you okay with that mm -hmm. absolutely thank you girls i know you've worked hard on this i appreciate it michelle 
and more. Thank you. Okay, Charlotte, I guess we don't have a 1030, am I correct? You are correct. Okay. Would you like Charlotte to give her update on the Gladden property? Sure. Uh, this was a property that um, had burnt and they took forever to take it down. Um, but it's on Philippi Pike in Eastview, um, just right down from JP's. It's all gone, it's cleaned up, and it looks great. There's another one on Philippi Pike. Yeah. Yeah, we've been we've been really getting it hard on it. This is a refrigerator out and I don't know it all in the front yard. Anybody have any questions? I have none. Thank you. Okay. Do we want to wait and do all the levies next week? Well, I've got issues with the uh, R1. Okay. okay, well, we can discuss and go from there. How's that? Okay. Number 12, did you discuss consider adoption of levy order for volunteer fire departments for January 22nd? What time were you guys supposed to? Sorry. Actually, I'm going to put this in reverse. And at 1045, we had the Department of Highways. Earl, do you want to stay there and talk? You want to come up here? You want whatever you guys want to do it? I appreciate you guys having us here. I didn't want to take a bunch of time, but um, if we've been having meetings annually where we invite all the local representatives, local uh, um, politicians, and just basically the general public to kind of give them an idea of where we're staying and what where the money's being spent, what we're trying to do, what our future projects are. Um, <clears throat> Paris and Kevin, we've not had an opportunity to film with you guys with everything with the boom and everything going on, but the past year I did just contact him. Thank you for getting us in. Um, I brought with me Mr. Aaron Stevens, which is my boss. He's our maintenance engineer for District 4. Um, so our design engineer with the district, which is Mr. Josh Brown. Scott Blosser, which is with our bridge department. Um, and Mr. Jeff Crystal, um, some of you may know him. He, he was a previous county administrator for Harrison County, but he does the interstate systems in Prop 50 and I 79. Um, I know that was a question you had last year. You know why? Because you called that county shop, one of how many trucks we had. And it was confusion. So I, well, I figured this would be the best way to address any questions on how we're up, get up the mess, obviously. But basically, I don't want to take a bunch of time. Um, Mr. Brown has a presentation showing. Um, the projects we have currently for Aaron, I don't know who's doing it, but if you guys don't mind, we have a paid out for you guys. We do this digitally, but do this, I don't want to take up, like I said, all the time, so we just hand you guys the handouts and get you an idea. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please, by all means, you know, while I'm here, if you need to address it, or if you guys need to contact me afterwards, I'm, I'm available at any time. Thank you. Then I'll speak at once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we had open house meeting on September 1st. The Harrison County was scheduled at 10 o'clock. I don't think anyone from here. That was our, it's our commission meeting. That's yeah. why. And yeah. I let somebody know that. Been, and that we're going to have them every quarter for the next two weeks or so. Because I hate to miss. Okay, we'll just. We'll just for y'all. So, our core plan that was completed in 2021, we ditched 50.9 miles, passed almost 630 miles, and utilized about 1,200 tons of material, stabilized 84 miles, and utilized a little over 1,000 tons of material, and mowed, mowed 114 miles. Our quota in Harrison County, we our quota is for 47 employees, and right now we have 43 active employees. And out of this 43, 41 employees are, are road workers. Here's our completed projects for 2021. We utilize purchase order paving for two and a half miles, state force paving for a little over 11 miles, state force car and chip was 3.4 miles. We completed one slide repair project and three bridge and small structure projects. 
breakdown for that is um, purchase order paving, Oral Valley on Route 36. We completed uh, 2.5 miles of that. And that was a two inch overlay. Big Oak Road, this is completed by our state force paving. Uh, Big Oak Road on Route 4 over 5, there's 2.17 miles we completed with a two inch overlay. Auburn Hills Road on Route 17 over 31. We complete almost a mile of that with a two inch overlay. State Force Paving has completed out the general fund surplus. Gregory's Run on Route 9, we completed 3.65 miles. And Kinchelo on Route 35, we completed 4.37 miles. Both of those were with a two inch overlay. The tar chip, Anderson Hollow, on Route 12 over 8. Completed 0.76 mile of that. Marion Heights, Route 50 over 74, we completed 0.39 mile of that. And that was trip to tar and chip for both of those. More of the tar and chip. Stouts Run on Route 57 over 1, we completed 0.85 mile of that. Buffalo Road on Route 32, we completed 1.19 miles of that. Great House Drive on the Harp Route. 501 over 32, completed 0.2 mile of that. Those are all triple car chips. We utilize the soil number repair on Riley Hollow, Kinchelow Road, Route 5 over 13, and that slide was about 72 feet long. The bridge and small structure projects, the Veterans Memorial Bridge on Route 19, it's 517 feet long. There's an expansion joint repairs. Two lick I beam on Route 34, it's 27 feet long. It has superstructure repairs. Lost Creek overpass on northbound, line 79, is 120 feet long. Repair holes in the deck of that bridge. You can see there's pictures here before and after the completed bridge projects. First on the Veterans Memorial Bridge. Here's a list of our scheduled projects for 2021. We're going to PSNE contract paid 11.7 miles. We're going to purchase order paid 5.82 miles. We're going to pay 1.7 miles with our state force paving. State force is going to park ship 4.9 miles. We have two slides we're going to repair and two bridge and small structure projects. For the, per, uh, the PSNE contract, we are working on Peter's Run to Little Oak Creek on Route 20. It's a two inch, over, two inch overlay mill fill. We've got slide repairs, drainage improvements, and guardrail replacement. And that one's currently under construction now. It's getting close to being finished. Uh, Wolf Summit to Addison, US 50. It's going to be an inch and a half mill fill and concrete joint repairs, guardrail replacement. And this should be let. Should it's a letter ready, so we'll be going to contracts soon. Going to construction soon, sorry. Our purchase order paving out of the general surplus program, West Virginia 20 to Wallace Pike. It's on West Virginia 20. They're going to pay 5.22 miles of that. It's going to be a two inch base and an inch and a half overlay. Just elaborate on that. If you guys remember here a uh, year or so ago, how bad Route 20 and Gregory's Run was when there were a lot of complaints on it. Um, we attacked it you know, a little bit of a time as we money came in, but now we've successfully paid that but with all Route 11 with the mark money that you guys, you know, we've got to call and request you guys to sign. So Route, Route 11, which is one of Whistleburg, was paved all the way from was the lights all the way back to uh, Route 50 Jarvis Field. Gregory's run is completely paved from one end to the next. And then once we, this project goes, Route 20 from Longport all the way to the West County line will, will be completely paved and uh, level all on slip repair. So it's been a major undertaking, but it will be completely right. Right, yeah. right now on Route 20, there's a drainage structure there that have walls busted off. We'll work with our bridge department to get that corrected before we come out and pay that project. Uh, we also got Purchase sort order of paving uh, Route 131 Benton Drive. We're going to be about 0.6 miles of that. It's going to be an inch and a half mill fill. Uh, 
State courses are going to be Shinston to Remington Road, Route 10, 0.73 mile of that. So it's going to be Reserve Lake. The Border Road, Route 25, so it'll be about about half a mile we're going to pay about there for the two inch overlay. Cedar Heights, Route 98 over one, it's going to be about 0.3 miles of that. Cedar Heights on 98 over two, 0.15 mile of that. They're both going to be two inch overlay. Fire and ship, our guys are going to be complete. Kinchelow Road, on Route 35 over three, 1.14 mile of that. Stutler Fort, Route 35 over five. 1.6 mile of that, and Jake Run, 48 over one, or you 0.85 mile of that. There we go, triple car and chip. Yeah, it's on the top of the road. Rural Lee Mine Road on Route 20 over 84, 0.3 mile. And Raccoon Creek Road, 20 over 22, and you 0.98 mile of that. There's triple car and chip as well. Slides we have planned repairs, cutting here run. Route 8 and the 80 feet of that, going to utilize soil mill repair in Alpha Hill Road, 25 over 3, 100 feet long. We're going to utilize soil mill repair that as well. Our bridge and small structure replacements, Flinderation Bridge, Route 50 over 7, it's 89 feet long. It's going to be expansion joint replacement and deck overlay. And it's scheduled to start early spring. The Creek Road drainage structure on 25 over 6 is 10 feet long. It's scheduled for replacement beginning spring, summer 2022. Of course, all these projects are subject to change for weather or funding. If you have any questions, let us know about those. Also, right now, too, we are next week we're going to start our dry runs for the snow and ice removal season. So we'll have all of our trucks with all of the equipment up and ready to go. We're going to inspect everything and then workers will go out and drive each route so we know. Where, where, what they can do out there, where they can turn around. Um, I brought Jeff Crystal with me. He's going to talk about our brine system a little bit, what we got going on. And also, too, we have 50 acres in each county set aside for herbicide spraying. So we're, they just completed all that right now. I'll let Jeff talk about the brine. Hello, everyone. Um, so, our brine system, we have three, three brown producing plants that we make our own brown now. So if we keep getting new equipment, trucks and stuff, we're utilizing them more. It's very cost effective for us to use. Uh, Brian, what Brian is, it's just salt water. It's 23% salt, 77% water. So we make it in our own plants and then we distribute it through storage areas we have throughout our district. So as we use it, you'll see it on the interstate, how we use it. You see the white lines on the interstate system. That's mainly where we pre-treat the roads before storms come in. We can treat um, up to 48 hours before a storm comes in as long as it comes as snow. If it comes in as rain, we don't use it because it washes it, it washes it off. Salt does not activate until it gets wet. So we can put it on the road, let it dry. When a snow flake starts hitting it, it activates it immediately. It helps us, it keeps the sheen on the road and helps us get the ice and snow for a little easier as we plow. Also, another way we use it is to we pre-wet our materials that's coming out of the truck. So we have some newer equipment that helps that. Um, so we mix, when, when you put salt on the road, a lot of it bounces off. So you lose half of your salt. So when it hits, it's dry, it bounces off the road, if there's no snow on it. And then cars will also kick some of it off the road. By pre-wetting the material, we are, it makes it in more of an oatmeal consistency. So that way it's it's staying within the tire tracks. It's not bouncing off the road when the cars hit it, they're mashing up the road. And it's also activated immediately right out of the truck. So it starts working immediately. It doesn't have to lay on the road to get wet before it starts acting. So if anybody has any other questions about the brine, they can contact me at the district headquarters. Uh, your phone number, email. I'm sure Aaron will share the emails with you. But we're willing to talk to anybody about our brine system or if, you, if you'd like to know. Thank you. Um, yeah. That's it. What about the lights on Route 50? <laughs> yeah, there's a project actually it's already been wet for that. Uh, it, I'm not sure when it's supposed to start. Uh, I'm not sure the start date on it, but they have a lot of project there. I, I thought I saw it yeah. in something in the paper or something. Right. Thank you. All. Question? Anything coming up with uh, on 
I-79. I know you're working down in the Marion County area, but when do, we, when do you think you'll start stretching three lanes down past Saltwell? That's not in the plans right now. On the plans at all? Yeah. There's a couple of bridges that will be painted uh, next summer, you know, between uh, Bridgeport and Moss Creek. We're pushing to get to Bridgeport Hill, Hill area uh, paved, so we're, we're working on that. That's the next session we'll probably work on just to resurface it. That'll be in the near future. What's what's 279? Who's that ball under? Who's in my ball under this year? I just, from the last repair to where we're at now, I, I drive it every day and that road's just slowly. I, I look after another winter, it's just going to be. One of the issues we've had with that is there's a lot of base layers on the road where the lane starts the same. And we've been trying to attack those as we have as they rise. Um, Aaron and I have talked about that in the past. We are, there's nothing on the, on the planes are there as we speak, but we are working on trying to get a contract that will come in and possibly get those repaired on uh, one, one shot. It's hard to come in. The county forces we're living, so what I, basically I'm, I'm reactive rather than proactive with the county. I have to wait till the, 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 it gets to an issue where I can move full forces from one area to the other. We're looking at a more proactive free solution to that. We're trying to get them all taken care of in one shot. But it's going to be a pretty costly endeavor because of the length of the road. It, the only thing I can say on that is it looks like uh, maybe the sun, the sun grade from the original project is starting to fail. So we're about to get down into the sun grade for that. But it's only in certain areas. But it is pretty dramatic to me or keep an eye on it and trying to correct that a lot. Thank you. Well, appreciate you guys coming. Thank you very much. And you guys have any questions, comments, uh, you can call me anytime I'm available. Appreciate that. I appreciate what you guys do, do for the state. I know you guys take a lot of slack from for us, but uh, I appreciate all that you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. You go back to number 12. Do you discuss, consider adoption of levy order for volunteer fire departments? And there's two options for that as well. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if you want to look at the one without the uh, dog section three. Where it says funds will be distributed as follows. Um, I'm not sure we could legally do that in a letter. Can we do it now as a commission? I think legal needs to look into this issue. Uh, we're asking for the funds, and I don't see how we can deny the funds. Then the other issue I have is that the entity goes belly up, it says we'll redistribute to one of more of the remaining volunteer fire departments. I don't know if that tension is if we'll choose which fire department or it goes to all the remaining fire departments. The one thing that I don't see in this levy call is if the fire department goes over to a fire fee. Are they removed from the levy? And their funds distributed because we have left the city of Clarksburg and the city of Bridgeport out. They both have fire fees, uh, and Shenton has a fire fee. So I'm not sure 
how we qualify a city that has a fire fee or doesn't with this levy call. There's no description on how to handle that. This levy works for all the volunteer fire department. That's why Bridgeport and Parksburg is not included in it. So we are taking care of the volunteer based majority, volunteer based fire departments that we have in the county. Some of the volunteer fire departments have paid employees. They do. Like one or two. When do we determine how many employees makes it a paid department? I don't think we determine that. On doing the levy because you have to make these determinations on how the money is distributed. And the wording is that they are distributed to the volunteer fire department. We also have wording in there that if for some reason one was closed up, then that is why we would distribute during their funds along the one or more of the remaining fire departments in there. Again, I, I, I personally, for us to sit here and say that I don't know who's going to make this determination again. I don't know who's actually overseeing this money, if it's the county. But I think you're going to have to set a board up to oversee it. I believe it feels about that, but for us to determine. One fire department will get money and the others don't if one goes out. I just see that as a big giant cluster. The wording is that it's left up to the county commission and we can equally distribute that to the remaining. So we um, should say that and not make it so that it's one of more of the remaining fire departments. And as for the reimbursement of this funds. Currently, right now, the volunteer fire department will, they get from us 30000 each year from our general fund. They submit the invoices. Now the chief has to sign off on it whenever they send it in. That way he's aware. It would operate on the same basis. Another levy recipient that we require this of. That they send us the invoices and have a cheap sign off on it. Mm -hmm. oh. We do this with health, back, uh, health access. We just send them a check every month. We don't ask a sign. We do send them a check every month. So why are we not just sending them a check every month? The quarter. We kept it the way that it is currently being handled now. It's by the commission. By the commission out of general funds. But these aren't general funds. These are money that are being promised out of levy by the taxpayers. And if they pay this fee, they expect their volunteer fire department to get the money and not to be under our control. No more than by county, no more than in the health department. So you would run, and that's fine. We can leave the fire department currently receiving the funds out of general county, but I believe that it was my understanding the intention was to possibly have the fire department come out of a levy. And that's one reason why it's kept separately. First, discussion I'm, not, and I'm not disputing that. I'm just disputing that we're going to pay the bills. all this stuff and pay the bills, and if the money goes to them and they take care of it, they're going to be the honest audit. Not us, and if they don't spend these funds correctly under the levy, they're the ones that go to jail. I really don't care anything about this being submitted and whatnot. The way we're doing it now is coming out of general funds. We're responsible, but once the levy's passed, it goes to them every quarter. And if they blow it, that's their problem, not ours. Okay, so besides that wording, is that, old, that old section. Okay, besides that, is there any other issues that we need to focus on before we bring it back? Any fire department closes down, the money gets split evenly between all the fire departments. Okay. And I think you need to still look at getting fire fees. If you're going to charge fire fee in Sheston of $15 a month or whatever it is, and then turn around and tax people for the same thing, I think you're going to run into an issue. Oh, yeah. well, I don't disagree. I don't think that. But they're already paying a tax and they're, they're paying fire departments. 
I just, I just personally think that if somebody, no, I, I, I don't fire disagree, fire. David. I pay a fire fee, and I, I mean, this was my first thought when this was brought up. I raised a practical point. Sure. What I believe Marion County did uh, was they went to the entities who were kind of call it double dipping with those, mm -hmm. and they asked if the municipalities consider reducing the fire fee. Uh, and some actually did reduce the fire fee. That may be a consideration for you all to address some of the, the heartburn over the issue. Well, maybe. I mean, it's just, uh, I, I want to help the fire departments, but I don't want to gouge people. Gouge people in the process. Okay, we can do that. Anything else? No, then the other one is when you get into the one with the dog, it doesn't say what happens to the money if the dogs dry up and next year it doesn't want dogs. Where's that money go? You want to? You can speak up. Yeah, I just want to go on record. This surprises me. I've never talked to anybody about funding our, our dogs. We're sustained through uh, you know, our regular budget. Uh, Asset forfeiture and concealed weapons. So I don't know where that came from. I've never had that discussion with anybody. I actually like to request that we remove consideration for this. The only dog unit that I know in the county is the sheriff's canine unit. That's not from me, so I'd like to go on record. Just saying I've not made that request. And I don't disagree with you, Robert. I'm sorry, it was my understanding when we talked about having a separate line item in the budget. And I figured that this would be better than having it come from your budget in a separate line item. Yeah, you misunderstood. Oh, oh, I have. Okay. Okay, number 13, review, discuss, consider, lease agreement between Harrison County Commission and Salvation Army for property located at 633 West Pike Street. Motion to remove from agenda. Motion's been made to remove from the agenda. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Review, discuss, consider $160,900 increase to law enforcement overtime to cover special duty contract agreements. Robert, you can speak that if you'd like to. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm taking up all your guys' time today. It seems like we've had every sure other issue. But, uh, this is something that we've discussed. And, uh, you know, we do some contract now uh, at that direction of the uh, uh, for my direction, but it has a mutual agreement between the commission and sheriff's office. It used to be the guys that just do 1099 market. So a lot of them were, were running through the county, which works better in a million ways. And I think that there's an agreement. And we've drawn down off of our current uh, uh, overtime budget, which is 250000 And as looking at it, projecting out, that's just not going to cover it. So uh, this uh, 160000 as a change it is. A true number of what we have contracted out today. Now that may change tomorrow. Uh, one may drop off. Uh, I may have to come back to you and say we're going to add another. And uh, but the true number as today, if we project out at the end of the fiscal year, would be about 160,000, maybe a little bit less. And so I asked that that uh, I guess two things that I'm asking: either that 160 some thousand be added as a separate line item, or if we leave it in. Um, over time that we increase the budget. And I know that we've had some sidebar discussions and, and I'm, I'm very flexible on this. I just don't want, because last year at the end of the fiscal year, uh, we were 61,782 over the, the overtime budget. I didn't want anybody to come back and say you overspent your budget uh, because that 160,000 uh, plus or minus is, is no cost. It doesn't cost the county dime. It's from outside sources. 
Southern Antero, the town of West Milford, Lost Creek. You've seen the list of the different contracts that we have out there. So I would ask one of two things that you just fund that for the 160000 or you fund it uh, quarterly or whatever. We look at it quarterly and see where we go. I know that might be a hassle changing the, the budget, uh, but I can understand the concerns that if you just put 160 in and all contracts drop off tomorrow, then I can move that in another area. And, and I understand that. I, I, I really do. So I, I would just ask that you take into consideration you know, the, the, the 250000 overtime will not sustain the, the contract work. And, and we need to uh, just I did a quick look this morning, and just as of July 1, uh, we built out uh, around $20,000 uh, on just three of the contracts. So you can see how that's going to add up. So well, I'm not sure how you want to handle that, uh, if you want to uh, do a partial uh, uh, funding towards that, and then to do that maybe mid-year or every quarter and see where we're at. And That's I would, my thought. I would be satisfied with my quarter, maybe quarterly. Right. As long as you know that I'm not it. irresponsibly over time uh, overspending my overtime. Right. I just want to. And I, I mean, I think that's a good way to, to track it too. Yeah, so. Now, is this their hourly rate? Is well, there anything it, included for wear and tear or anything like that? Well, it, it started out like that. And then it, the problem is with the overtime, uh, what we started out was a base uh, $50 an hour, let's say. And, and some of them are different. We, we do a little different with the municipalities than we do private. Uh, you know. And no, to, to answer your, your question, okay. no, there's nothing that comes back now to cover for the wear and tear on the, the vehicle or, or the fuel. Um, and what my thought process was on that when I looked at that is that, uh, take for instance, uh, West Milford. You know, if, we, if we've got the city paying a deputy overtime to be down there, if there's another Mark Barr and another police officer down there that handles, handles the calls there, that normally we would have to handle anything. I don't know if that's a, a, a good reason not to spread that cost out. Then I think like on the well pad uh, patrols, you know, the well pads are areas that we would never be able to uh, have, have the manpower to time the patrol otherwise. But the citizens out there are to see a car. That they to see. Now these guys, when they're on extra patrol, I mean, I'm sure you guys know this. I mean, they, they have to take emergency calls and they have to jump into action so something happens. They're just not restricted there. Uh, so it's kind of good to get those extra cars out. But if it's uh, if it's something we need to discuss, I'm open for discussions on that. We can start, uh, you know, factoring something in. I in previous finally, places I've been, it, it, it's you know, when I was police chief, when we went, we charged extra for. Uh, well, I just happened to cars. see it somewhere. Yeah, yeah so I mean, I don't there. mean where it was. It would be I'm easy sure. to adapt to that. Find how other places were going. It. Right. But like I say, my my thought was, you know, just you got to, presence out there. You get present. So when we started the billing, uh, you know, with, with fifty dollars an hour, I, I told the, the girl that does our billing just go ahead and do the hourly for now, but put, put some out there more hours. But I'm I'm very open for conversations on that. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. I, I I would think we would want to do something quarterly. So you want to make a motion for. This money to be distributed quarterly. Is that what you're looking for? I'll well, make a motion that quarterly payments of the hundred and sixty thousand nine hundred dollars be made to law enforcement for early time. And it has a line already separated out. We have lines for each of those, correct? We do working with bookkeeping and the uh, accounts receivable down in the tax office. We've been able to break that down, but we'll have a good, we don't have a good gauge on it now. We've got a general gauge, but uh, by this time, maybe in six months, we should know exactly, you know, what's coming in and where it's going at. So it will give us a, a much better gauge. So you want to give them 40175 a quarter, David? Whatever it comes out. Whatever it comes out to, yeah. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, motion carried. Number 15, review, discuss, consider authorization to accept $60,000 stipend from Harrison County Board of Education for PRO SRO deputy at Lincoln High School. Robert? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This is uh, the last. Uh, just uh, as we've done with the, a lot of the other schools uh, at, at cooperation with the Board of Education, with the, the commission. 
Uh, we've been asked to replace the deputy at Lincoln uh, High School. We do have the resources to, to do that, or I guess I would say the assets to do that without back filling that position. And uh, I would recommend that we receive the 60000 uh, that we would select uh, and train up who goes down there and they would be able to handle that. Uh, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. Move to approve the up to 60,000 site for the Harris County Board of Education for Lincoln High School. Move to approve um, to accept the $60,000 stipend from the board of Harris County Board of Education for, I'm going to add PRO and SRO deputy for Lincoln High School. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Number 16. Thank you, Robert. Oh, thank you. Guys. Review, discuss, consider recommendation on janitorial bits. Number 16 won't wait until next week since we'll have that in on Saturday. Okay. That's the one. Okay. Number 16 will wait. So just on 16, we will have a cost savings at our and how the Bids work out with each other because we read them the other day. It seemed like there was a lot of discrepancy in my mind on the work that they were offering. There was, there was a lot of differences, mainly with the amount of employees that they were offering to do the services. But I do have that all break down, break down and I have the cost savings break down. Thank you. You're welcome. Good. Number 17, administrator's report. I have not. Number 18, Commissioner comments. Uh, Susan, on the administrator's report, I know the last administrator used to come and go and look at a written report. Uh, I would like to see that back. Uh, one of our other staffing departments semi do it, but I would like to see it. All the department heads, including the administrator give us a written report each week. I think uh, things happen during the week that we could be better apprised of what's going on than we every month. So I'd like one every month. I don't need one more. Right now we're under commission comments. Do you have any, Mr. Pickles? Yeah. I have not. Mr. Hagel? Uh, I won't discuss it more next week, but as a comment, uh, I would like for us to have legal staff determine, determine what kind of commission we're talking about. Because we're either going to be a chief executive county commission plan, commission by county manager, or a commission that is governed by three commissioners. At this point, we seem to be following several different views of how this commission is run and what we voted on as a commission years ago. So I would like uh, council to come back and explain to this commission the differences so that they understand and which one we're operating under. And if we wish to choose to change it. Okay. Adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.